name's Ellie and I'm Stitching Bee here on Flosstube and also over on Instagram. This is a channel all about cross stitch. I'm a particular lover of bees, so you'll see bees featured in a lot of my projects. And I'm also a bit of a cross stitch barking hunter. So you'll probably see that in the haul that I show kind of in the coming videos and things. Um, can't, can't go wrong with a good cross stitch bargain, can you? Um, so welcome to episode number two. Um, I'm so, so glad to be back with you again already. I had an absolute blast filming the first episode and I'm so, so grateful for all the lovely comments and likes and for all the people that subscribe to my channel. Um, it's absolutely wonderful to be welcomed in, into this cross stitch community and to chat to so many of you. Um, oh, it's just fantastic. I was really, really touched. Um, and yeah, hopefully you enjoy the second video as much as you did the first one. So the plan for today mainly is just to talk about all my fully finished objects and finishes that I've had over the past few years really um, from when I started cross stitching again back in 2020. So I do have about 50 projects to show, um, well 47 fully finished objects and three finishes. So hopefully you'll enjoy that. Um, they do kind of range from when I first started I was just doing little cards um, and I wasn't really great at finishing. I just had the tools and resources that I had around me. Um, so hopefully you'll see a bit of progression from when I first started to the current day. And if you've looked over on my Instagram, you'll see that I've had some quite big finishes recently, um, which I'm delighted to show you. So yeah, grab a drink and let's get started. Right, so my first project, um, or fully finished, that I'm going to show you is back from 2020 and I briefly kind of mentioned it in my last video um, as this is the main project that got me back into cross stitch. Um, so this is a design from Caterpillar Cross Stitch and it's called Positivity Rules. So sorry if there's a bit of a glare. I've got a new ring light because fancy now. Very exciting. Um, so yeah, it's a gorgeous house and it's got loads of positive words within it. And as I say, I absolutely love stitching this back in 2020. Finishing of it isn't the greatest. I could have probably picked a better frame. Um, but, you know, it worked for what I had at the time. Um, and it's stitched with all the kit materials. So it's kind of like a, a 14 count Ada. It's kind of a blush pink. You probably can't really tell with this light. Um, but yeah, it's a really nice project. So I just have that up in the living room at the moment. So that's number one. Unfortunately, a lot of the projects I have have actually given away as gifts. Um, so I don't have the physical object to show you necessarily, but any projects that I don't have the physical thing, I'll just put pictures up and kind of just briefly talk about it. Okay, so the next one is an anniversary card that I made for my boyfriend a number of years ago now. I think this was, yep, yeah, back in 2020 as well. So this was inspired by the film Up. So it's a little house with all the balloons and I just changed it so all the balloons are metallic. And I kind of did a collage, kind of ripped up bits of magazine to do the frame. And yeah, just made a cute little card. Um, the next one is a Winnie the Pooh project, which I'll put a picture in um, next to me. And that is by Designer Stitches. Um, and I think it was part of their calendar. I think it was October. Um, and I gifted this to a friend as a Secret Santa gift, which she really enjoyed because she absolutely loves um, Winnie the Pooh. So yeah, she enjoyed that one. Um, next we have Your One in a Universe. And this is a design by Lucy Heaton. Again, this was my boyfriend a few years ago. He loves all things space. So I've got this kind of little alien and then I've added beads here instead of the French knots. Um, just stitched on a black Ada um, and metallic thread as well for the words. And then just put kind of stickers, star stickers around the edge, um, which was a really quick and easy finish and lots of fun to make. Right, next we have Sending Love, which I don't actually have. So I'll put a picture up again. And this is by Doreen Jones. Um, and this is from the World of Cross Stitch magazine. Um, I'm not... 100% sure which issue but if you're really interested I can always um find out for you so that's that one there again that was I think I gave that to my sister um the next one again don't have is 
detective stitches and I actually sent this into the World of Cross Stitching magazine and got featured in their magazine which was really exciting and um, so I did a, a Sherlock Holmes inspired escape room um, for one of my cousin's birthday parties and it was all Sherlock Holmes themed so I thought I saw that in the magazine that next month and I thought oh, I'll make that for as a little thank you card. So I've used um, just the silhouette of the Sherlock Holmes and then I've put in a circular aperture card and then I basically printed off um, pages of the Sherlock Holmes novel, ripped them all up and then did a collage um, and made that as the frame. And then when I was at uni, you know, you dress up as all sorts of different things, don't you? So I had some spare vampire blood, as you do, um, and thought, why don't I just kind of put that on the card and, yeah, make it look more like a kind of crime scene. Um, so that's the kind of vibe I went with that. And yeah, she was really chuffed with it. So that was a lovely little project to give her. The next one is Dandelion Hedgehog, and this is a Margaret Sherry design. Again, a card that I made for a friend. Um, just kind of finished it on, uh, you know, the cards that you can get from the works or the range, um, just the different papers. Um, so I picked one that was kind of complementary to it, and mounted it onto that, and then put it onto a lovely pink card. So yeah, that was really cute as well. Next one is Caffeine, which is by Vlada X Stitch on Etsy. Again, I did this years and years ago. My, this was for my sister because um, she loves coffee, absolutely obsessed with coffee. Um, and I thought this was just a really nice project with the flowers and yeah, I thought it was gorgeous. Right, number nine is Bullfinches and Berries. And this is by Oven, which I think are possibly a Russian designer um company not 100% sure um so yeah I've got that um all fully finished and my dad made the frame for it so that sits in my parents living room next one as well also was gifted to my parents is called flowers of the field and that is an anchor kit that I stitched up um and again my dad made the frame um and yeah it was a lovely lovely project to stitch I really enjoyed it Next we have the Jolly Characters, which were from the World of Cross Stitch issue 300. Um, and these are kind of dangly leg Christmas cards, which um, were really fun to make. Um, so basically you stitch on perforated paper, you stitch the body of the character first, and then you can do their feet and you stitch them separately. Um, and then you cut them all out um, and back them, I back them onto card and use double-sided tape tape at that point and um, I'd probably use the kind of sticky back velvet which is what I use for my Mill Hill finishes nowadays and um, but that's all I had at the time and I didn't really know any better anyway Um, so then I put the string that um attaches the feet to the body um as well when I stuck them all down and then kind of loosely attached it to the card um, and wrote a little note inside and things but then when um they were finished with the card they could just attach the little character and then they could use it as a Christmas ornament so yeah, they went down really well um, and I stitched them for most of my family and they're all really appreciative of those. So it was good. And I have to make one for myself at some point because you know what it's like when you stitch, you make all these things for other people and then you actually look and you think, I haven't really got much cross stitch in my own, um, in my own flat. So, you know, it's about time that I do stitch more kind of Christmas ornaments for myself, which is one of my kind of main goals um, in 2024 as well, although I haven't actually started it yet. But there's still plenty of time, isn't there? Right, the next one I do actually have, and this is Blackwork Square by Peppermint Purple. So this is a gorgeous Blackwork project. And this again is just stitched on black 14 count Ada. It's my first ever black work project, but I thought I'd just kind of give it a go. Um, and again, I just finished it with the fancy paper that I think was probably from the works or the range um, and mounted it onto that. Um, after kind of, I think I just stuck it down onto card um, back then, but I, I lace all my framed pieces now, but I didn't have those skills at that point. So I think it's probably just stuck on. I think I even used double-sided tape or um, masking tape or something I'm not entirely sure but yeah it still looks nice in the frame I think the frame just from the works as well so I really like that one um, next we have Little Miss Sunshine which again is a design from Adele Wellsby which is from the Cross Stitch Characters book um, 
it was just kind of a little small card for a friend again really quick finish just mounted it on with double-sided tape onto a bit of card and that was that so then we have the wedding cross stitch which is two gorgeous birds a blue one and a purple one which are stitched on 28 count white even weave um, I stitched this for my boyfriend's parents for their wedding anniversary um, and oh, it was such a fun stitch um, it was all kind of block colours so it was really easy to do um, and yeah I did make quite a few mistakes along the way though counting errors and I had to unpick a lot of it but it was worth it in the end and I love the finished effect and I did get this one professionally framed I think the silver of the flame fra the frame really complements um, the piece so yeah I'm really chuffed with that one staying on the theme of wedding gifts and um, this was for my parents 25th wedding anniversary um, and this is a janelin design called gathering honey and it's a very intricate design it does have some text um normally where i've actually written their names and the church that they got married in and the date and things um and again it's got bees on it so i couldn't go wrong with that really enjoyed stitching this one but it did take a long time and there was so much back stitch but i think it really brings it to life in the end um and yeah i got this professionally framed as well i meant to say the previous one was a Duna stitch Etsy design and um, the the first bird one the wedding design and um, which I'll link down below if you're interested that was just over on Etsy next we have swimming school which is two gorgeous turtles um, and this is by Bothy Threads again stitch just for my sister and um, I bought the fabric I believe from um oh what's it called again Tom and Lily Creations on Etsy which it comes from France um, really reasonable prices shipping obviously is a little bit more expensive than it would be in the UK um, but it was well worth it I ordered a couple of pieces at once so it made it worthwhile um, and it's a gorgeous kind of dark blue even weave linen no it's a linen linen sorry um, and yeah just framed this one myself I laced it um, and there's loads of tutorials if you don't know how to lace a project um, which I found really beneficial and I find lacing a project really just creates that really professional kind of look and finish and makes it look really smooth pulls out all the creases any kind of crinkles um, and yeah it's not actually that difficult to do um, but it really creates a, a wonderful effect I think and is well worth doing and putting the time into so I think I got that frame from the range um, and yeah I really enjoyed stitching that one um, again lots of colour changes lots of confetti did make quite a few mistakes along the way um, but I think the, the overall design is gorgeous next we have friends make life a little sweeter so I found this on a stash page on Facebook and I believe it's an Emma Condon, Condon design um, and it's from the Cotton and Twine Club box of January 2022 um, this was again absolutely blast to stitch gave this to a friend um, and it sti sits proudly at the top of her stairs which is wonderful um, loads of bright colours just like small simple motifs that you can finish really quickly um, and yeah I thought it was a fab project would highly recommend next we have the angel ornament which I stitched for Christmas. So this was from the World of Cross Stitching issue 301, which is uh, Christmas 2020. Um, this was on perforated paper. So again, you kind of stitched the design and then you turned it around the other way and stitched the wings on the opposite side of the perforated paper, which really, really confused me, but I got there in the end. And then the whole idea is that you, you cut it out and then you um, roll the kind of finished piece together and the wings just slot nicely and yeah it makes a gorgeous little christmas ornament and she's actually sat at the top of my tree um for the last year or two now and yeah she's fab um i think there's lots of other ones that were free kits with the world across stitch magazine and um, that i'll need to stitch as well so i've got a collection of them right so the next one again still don't have any of these i'm afraid they're all been gifts and um, this is a toadstool a uh, mini cross stitch which was a little kit from Hobbycraft which I stitched on some kind of opalescent even weave I think it was possibly 28 count and I used one of the photo baubles which you can buy I think they sell them in Hobbycraft, the range, they'll even sell them in boots I think um yeah or any kind of 
photo bauble. That's all you need. Um, and yeah, I laced the finished piece onto a, like a circular bit of card, mounted it onto some pretty paper, um, and then slot that into the bauble. And then yeah, it made a gorgeous little present for my friend. Um, and yeah, would highly recommend that as a finishing idea. Um, it was a bit fiddly at first trying to get it all to kind of fit, but it did in the end. Um, and I hope to make more kind of photo baubles, um, more turn them into cross stitch baubles soon. And you'll see another couple of finishes, which I've done with the photo baubles. Next one I do actually have, and this is Gnome, And this is a gorgeous kind of Mill Hill kit, which is perfect for summer. Um, again, stitch this on the cord for perforated paper. And then as per Mama Loves you, GB, her instructions to use this kind of sticky back velvet, which you can just get off Amazon. It comes in all different colours um, and it's just dead easy. I mean, you can use felt as well, but I think this creates an even more kind of professional finish. Um, so you'll see it's got all the little beads. It's not really focusing because of my face. A um, bit of back stitch, gorgeous bees here and here and the little jingly bell. Um, which sits on the top of his hat. And then I made the um, hanger from just leftover beads. And yeah, it's really, really sweet finish. Just about the size of my hand. Um, really good fun. Um, another Mill Hill finish, which I gifted to my parents, is a Scotty dog. We have a little Scotty dog at home. So um, I thought this was the perfect gift for them. And that has sat on their tree as well this year. Um, again, another Mill Hill kit, which I backed with the sticky back velvet, um, a couple of beads, but not, not you know, too many. Um, it was really quick little finish. Next, we have an embroidery piece that I did quite a while ago. This is the only embroidery. Oh, no, I've got two embroidery pieces to show. Actually, this is the first one. This was just from a little kit off of Amazon. Um, just when I kind of first started. I think that's the right way around. Yeah. Um, and I framed this myself, again, used just kind of pretty paper, cut out the circular shape um, to create that kind of aperture to then put in the frame. Um, and it's got a gorgeous array of stitches, kind of satin stitches, bullion knots, all the corns, bullion knots, um, running stitch, leaf stitch. Yeah, you name it, it's probably in here. Um, Sorry, the light's kind of reflecting off the glass. Um, a really wonderful finish, though. It took a good while, but it was worth it in the end, and I learned a lot from it. So, yeah, I'll see if I can switch the light off for a second. And you might be able to just see it a bit better. So, yeah. It was good fun. Right, switch back on. Um, next one we have is a fairy tale castle, which I'll just show you here is a sweet Annette Designs on Etsy. And she actually you can buy the little wooden pieces that you can stitch it on, um, these kind of wooden stamps, which I'd highly recommend. They were so much fun. It's really fun stitching on wood because you can't go wrong, you know, there's no kind of slipping around the holes, you know, you can only go in one place. Um and yeah, I really enjoyed stitching this one. So this is kind of like a Disney fairy tale inspired castle. And then again, finished it with the sticky back velvet. And I bought these little easels from the range and just painted it white. And then the piece just sits nicely and just displayed in my flat like that. So yeah, really cute little finish. Oops, dropped it already. Good start. <laughs> um, the next one is an embroidery piece, which I'll show here, which I stitched for a wedding gift. Um, I actually designed this myself. Don't look too closely. The bees are a bit chubby, <laughs> to say the least. But, um, you know, it's a good experience to kind of learn different embroidery stitches again. And I used a lot of YouTube tutorials. And, yeah, I really enjoyed it in the end. Um, and then I finished it. So it's stitched on just the kind of generic cotton that you'd embroider on. And then I mounted it onto a hexagon shape, which I think I just bought it from eBay. They were just selling the kind of um, MDF 
shapes that you could use so I kind of laced it onto that and then I've got another hexagon shape which kind of formed a frame and I put a nice um gold ribbon around the edge of that and then I bought some uh, so their kind of wedding was I've called it midnight flowers because that's the kind of theme that the wedding was and um, so it was all dark greens purples that kind of thing lots of flowers um were there so that's kind of why I went with those colours and yeah I bought that gorgeous fabric I think it was actually from the States I can't I think Spoonflower I believe was the website I got it from um and yeah gorgeous kind of hexagonal shapes um with the gold around it and I thought all that kind of complemented really well and then I got the actual frame from Picture Frames Express um which is a custom made frame and then you could choose exactly what colour you wanted dimensions of the design everything like that so yeah that was gifted as a wedding present next one again still don't have sorry is a bee decoration which is a little kit that I got from Home Bargains um and again really quick finish that was on the the wood again again stick to <laughs> use the sticky back velvet and then put a magnet on it and made it into a little fridge magnet which I gifted to my parents and then I gifted the rainbow one that's here as well another home bargains kit and um, part of the Sarah Ashford range um and yeah made that into a little fridge magnet as well so they were cute little gifts the next one is the King Charles coronation piece that I did um, back in May um, of 2023. And this was from Wilms Co on Etsy, which I'll link down below. Um, and again, it's just a kind of emblem that was um, used for the coronation. And again, just laced it onto a circular piece of mount board and then managed to find, I don't know how, but the perfect sized um, wooden tray but it just had a little lip um that meant it just sat in there nicely um and can just be displayed on a kind of plate holder or an easel or something so yeah that was a really fun stitch again minimal colors within the design so it stitched up really quickly and every kind of little motif felt like a little finish which was fab next we have home sweet home which is a Doreen Jones design, which I believe was a free kit from the Water Cross Stitching Magazine 309, um, which was August 2021. I gifted this to my friend as well. She's got so many cross stitch pieces. Um, and I lay, uh, laced it in, into the hoop, um, which was supplied with the kit. And then I got some Harris Tweed offcuts, which I collected from a kind of local craft um, show and use that as the kind of backing fabric which was really good fun and I've got some bits left to do some more finishing like that as well. Um, next we have the seahorse bookmark which is from Petrulia, Petrulia um, which I believe are UK Ukrainian designers sorry um, and they kind of gifted me this kit to try out and to review um, which I did on my Instagram page so this is the seahorse design so it's really cute. So the, basically the kit comes with all the fabric and threads that you need. So it's 16 count Ada, um, kind of minimal colours, but I think it's really effective with how the shading is. So if I can move out of the way. Um, and yeah, and then I finished this. I put some batting or kind of wadding um, underneath it before I mounted it onto the card. And then I blanket stitched um, the fabric onto the back, just a kind of wave fabric. And then I glued on the rickrack, but used two different colours of rickrack and slightly um, put the, so the, the one colours in between the gaps of the other um, to create that kind of wave effect, which I thought um, looked quite nice. So this sits in the bathroom um, and again, sits on one of the little easels that I bought from the range. A really big fan of this one. Really great kit and would highly recommend. I think you can believe, um, buy their kits off of Amazon. Um, so have a look if you're interested. Uh, where are we now? So Winnie the Pooh was the next one. This was a, a baby shower gift. Um, the kit was from the works originally and it comes with a height chart and a cushion and all the different things you can make. Um, so I just picked one of the Winnie the Pooh um, patterns that I liked 
and stitched it on a duck as your 32 count even weave um, and then just bought a little frame from the range again laced it um, and I thought this was a really effective little cute finish and hopefully I'll stitch some more Winnie the Pooh um, soon. Next one of my favourite finishes that I did is Ursula from Abby Sue designs um again gifted this to my friend who has all these other pieces um and I stitched this on a hand dyed possibly 28 or 32 count linen um and she loves all the um the bad guys in all the Disney films basically um so I thought I'd stitch this for her and to kind of embellish it again I laced it put it in a black frame which I got from the range and then one of our family friends um, had passed away, unfortunately, and she was a big crafter. So she had all these bits and bobs um, of different craft kind of mixed media supplies. Um, and oh, she'd colour coordinated them and it was all so easy to find what I needed. So I got some of the kind of stuff from the blue um, jar that she had and literally just attached that around the edge. And then I got some um, shells from the works, I believe yeah from the works um, and stuck those on as well and I just think it really complemented the piece and really brought out all the colours um, and I was really really chuffed with that one um, and my friend really appreciated it too so that was good. Um, next one is Magic Owl which again is another sweet Annette Designs um, one that's on Etsy um, so again stitched on the wood kind of Harry Potter Hedwig inspired piece um backed it with the velvet and then it sits perfectly on the little castle so yeah they sit together the little um fairy tale castle and that one right next one is a big finish um and probably one of my favorite ones if not the favorite one actually i'll just reach over and get it so this is a chart from Yasmin's Made with Love and this was back um, from her May Patreon um, when she released that and it's called Monarch Quaker and here she is I have this in my bedroom and I get to see it every day which is just fabulous I want to say one of my favorite Quaker designs I've ever seen like as soon as it came out the day of it coming out I had to stitch it um, I think it was originally charted on, or oh, the fabric suggested was a kind of yellowy fabric, um, but I thought I really wanted something that contrasted the yellows and the golds that were in the butterfly. So I went with, again, 32 count, yeah, I think it was 32 count, duck as your even weave, um, and then stitched away with that, and I used just all the DMC colours. Try and zoom in a little bit on the... It's been a nuisance. Um, oh, it's just absolutely gorgeous design. All the Quaker motifs are just so perfect and complement it all so, so well. I love the little alphabet. And then I finished this again in a Picture Frames Express um frame which meant I could pick exactly what measurements I wanted and I went for this more kind of ornate frame but then really wanted the gold to con um to go with the, the butterfly colours um and I was like absolutely over the moon with how this turned out. So yeah one of my favourite finishes um and yeah Yasmin's made the love I can't remember if I said that bit or not um and I've got a lot of her other Quaker designs, so I hope to stitch them all um, and then have them all displayed together, which would be really nice. Right, next one is Monsters Inc, which was a little hobby craft kit that came out fairly recently. Um, and I made, let me just get it, um, this into a little cross stitch pillow, which was the first pillow I ever made, which I was really, really tough with. Um, you know, only swore at the sewing machine for about three hours straight to try and get it to work, but we got there in the end, persevered. Um, and it's not perfect, but you know, um, gave it a go. So this is the little Monsters Ink design, which is by A2B Brands. Um, I just switched out the Ada for an even weave, um, 28 count. There was so many fractionals in this. 
also, oh, this is not okay for beginners at all. Um, and yeah, I finished it with a nice kind of boutique um, fabric. I was originally intending to do the bit where you just don't sew it up at the bottom, stuff it and then sew it up um, by hand. But to be honest, I was so focused on a, making a straight line on the sewing machine that I completely forgot and sewed the whole thing up and then had to do a cut across here um, and then ladder stitched it closed. Um, but yeah, it's not perfect. But oh well, I'm happy with it. And um, I sewed on the Rick Rack as well before I turned it out. And again, I thought the colours complemented well. Um, and yeah, that's a cute little pillow that I have by the TV. Just about the size of my hand or so. Um, but was, yeah, really happy with that, that I actually managed to do it. And from then on, I've made quite a few different, um, well, not quite a few, I've done two, um, cross-stitch pillows and I hope to do a lot more. So yeah, gave me the confidence to give it a go um, and definitely use YouTube, all the different tutorials on there. There's the Vonna Pfeiffer ones um, and Fat Quarter Shop as well. I've used quite a few times, highly recommend them um, and just take your time with it. And anyone can finish if they really put their mind to it. Um, so yeah, that was that one. And next we have Inclusion is Key, which is another, yes, yeah, blah, blah. So I put my teeth back in. Yasmin's Made with Love design, which I model stitched for her. Um, it was so much fun to stitch. Um, I think it was a Fabrics by Crafty Kate um, fabric, and it was all using the Roxy Floss Co threads, which were just an absolute joy to work with. Um, and yeah, you'll see it at the back of some of Yasmin's videos. Um, I took this picture with all the kind of vintage keys, which um, my dad had actually collected over the years. Um, and yeah, I thought that kind of went with it quite well. So I was really chuffed with that finish and I'm glad that Yasmin liked it. Um, and you can purchase that from her, uh, her, well, she has got an Etsy shop, I think, but um, she's got a new website now. So definitely go and check that out. Right, so next we have another Mill Hill kit, which again, I have finished in the same way, stitched it on a perforated paper, made the little hanger with the leftover beads, all the beads sit over the mushroom here. And I think, yeah, there's a couple, there's a little ladybird there, a um, couple in the flowers here as well, um, but not too many beads. And then again, sticky back velvet, use it all the time and makes a nice little decoration. Um, and I've got one of those little trees that lights up. So I just hang these Mill Hill finishes off of that. Um, yeah. Next we have two more baubles, um, which are nativity baubles that I made for my auntie who was um, having a nativity craft event in her local church. Um, I stitched these one over one on 28 count. So they were pretty tiny. Um, and again, same process as the other one, um, laced it onto some card, put it on some other pretty card. Oh, I think it was fabric I actually used for that one, star fabric, um, and then put it into the photo bauble. And it makes a gorgeous little finish. So that was Mary and Joseph was the first one and Three Wise Men as the second one. Um, and they're both Maria Diaz designs from the Ultimate Cross Stitch ultimate Christmas cross stitch magazine that's got a mouthful to say in 2019 um, and I think I just got off got it off Readly um, to find that one. Next I'm getting into more of the kind of fancier finishes now this is when I actually started to watch all the, all the tutorials and um, I felt I kind of knew a bit more what I was doing and um, so this is I Puff and Love You I think it's actually called Puff and Love the actual um, the chart and again I stitched this for my boyfriend for our five year anniversary. Um, and it was a really quick stitch. I got the um, pattern off of Cotton Club Crafts, which are a UK shop. Highly, highly, highly recommend them. Absolutely excellent customer service, really reasonable prices, significantly cheaper. And if you were to buy the actual um, kit from Bothy Threads themselves, um, and really lovely lady, um, I believe her name's Sue, um, definitely go and buy from her. I get most of my charts from uh, charts and kits, well mainly kits from there. Um, so yeah, this is that design. Um, I stitched this on a kind of 32 count sky blue, even if you can't really tell, 
see the, the variegation in there at the moment. Um, and then again, laced it and framed it in a frame that I got from the charity shop. And I'm sure you'll see more of those um, frames in coming videos when I start to finish more things because I have got a huge box of them and really don't need any more but every time I go in I just have to have a look and end up buying a couple more and um, so I just think it's perfect when you you have your project and you just look through the frames and you just find one that fits so perfectly and um, obviously you can get frames from the range and other places but they're more kind of generic ones I really like that this has got a bit of interest around the side and the gold um, that really finishes it off. So I was really, really chuffed with that one and my boyfriend loved it too. Um, next one, again, was another kind of different finish. Where have I put it? Oh, this one here. Um, and this was a kit from Hobbycraft again. Um, I actually got it off of eBay because um, they don't sell this one anymore. Um, and it's a little snowman. And I basically stitched this and made it into a little snow globe. So you can shake it. And there we have it, little snow globe. And um, I stitched this on a 32 count slate grey even weave. So I'll switch the light off again for a second and you can just see it without the glare. Um, and yeah, backed it with a bit of mount board, laced it onto that, and um, got a nice bit of fabric. No, fabric, paper, again, from the collection that I have, put that at the back, and then you just slot it in as if you were going to put a photo in the snow globe. And it creates a really cute finish. Yeah. So yeah, I was a big fan of that one. I'm going to make more, have a snow globe collection. That's the idea anyway. All right, we're getting there. <laughs> I think we're on right finish number 40 um next one is an it isn't a fully finish but it is a finish oh. um sorry i never actually bought my board today i'm slacking already um this is cyclamens and this is from the book floral year in cross stitch and this is the stitch along that we're doing floral year in cross stitch south which you can check out on Instagram. So we're stitching a flower for every season. So this was the one for autumn. So there's quite a few different ones to choose from, but I love cyclamen. My mum always has cyclamens um, and I thought the colours in this were just beautiful. So I went with that one. And then um, it advises you to stitch on a kind of cream or um, white Ada raw linen and of course I want it to be different and stitch it on a um, navy even weave <laughs> which was a bit tricky at first to try and see the holes but I've got a brand new light now so it makes all the difference um, and that's the back of it if you're interested um, a pin stitch generally when I stitch so um keeps the back nice and neat so I don't entirely know what I'm going to finish these into. I'm possibly thinking either a pillow or a flat fold. Um, but I wanted to stitch all the seasons first before I finish them all. Um, so that was that. Next one we have is Swallows, which is a Paco kit from 1994. Again, found it on eBay for a really reasonable price. Um, and yeah, I had to have it. Um, my dad always talks about the swallows coming back and that's the kind of first sign of spring. So I thought it was the perfect gift for him. Um, again, I framed it um, with Picture Frames Express frame. Um, and I thought that really complemented that kind of um, nice mount board that went around the edge. And um, the double mount kind of complemented it with the different colours that were in the project. Um, so I was really chuffed with that one and he really liked that. Next we have the Snowdrop floral year and cross stitch finish there we go again this was the winter one so I'll start the spring one soon and then the summer one and then I'll have the whole collection um, so yeah really gorgeous colours in that as well next one is I Lava You which was a cute little one that I did for my sister. Um, it's called 
Crafty Smith UK is the shop that I bought it from on Etsy. Um, and again, I stitched this on, I think it was again, 28 count um, hand dyed even weave um, and finished it into a little pillow, which was really chuffed with um, and got the chenille trim from 21st Century Yarns, which I think was possibly eBay. Bought it a couple of years ago, so I don't know if they're still running. Um, and then got some gorgeous fabric, which again, I just collected from when I've been um, out shopping <laughs> at all these little craft fairs and things. Um, and yeah, I was really happy with that one. Next one is To My Friend from Yasmin's Made With Love. This was a free chart that I received um, when I made a purchase of a physical chart. And I stitched this on, again, the navy um, even weave and made it into a heart-shaped pillow. Don't look at it too closely. It's a bit skewish on the one side, but um, yeah, again, something I've never done before. I thought I'd just give it a try. Um, again, same with the chenille trim was from 21st Century Yarns um, and backed it with just a kind of uh, another batiki kind of fabric that I've uh, bought from a previous craft show. Um, and my friend was absolutely over the moon with it and said she'll treasure it. So yeah, it's all worth it um, making gifts for people when they appreciate them. Right, we're getting there now. Um, next one is a pattern by X Stitch by TA on Etsy. Um, and this is a, a cityscape basically of London. Again, made this for my sister, um, stitched it on a 28 count even weave um, and used the variegated DMC thread. Um, and it re created a really nice effect. It's all purples and blues. Um, and then I really wanted to finish it into a drum. Never ever have I used made a drum before, but I thought, you know, why not? <laughs> Let's give it a go. Um, and it was actually not as hard as what I thought it would be. Um, so I used lots of different tutorials and made the drum shape. And then I decided to buy, I didn't want to kind of stereotypically British fabric, you know, with like London buses or flags or anything on. I wanted to keep it um, in keeping with the kind of color scheme that I'd picked. So I bought a gorgeous Liberty fabric um, off of eBay. And I'll link the seller down below because the prices were pretty reasonable. I didn't have a huge piece, um, obviously, because it is quite expensive fabric. But I thought um, it was a Wiltshire um, kind of blue and purple design. Um, and I thought that went really well with the colour scheme. So I used that for the top and for the bottom. Used lots of different um, wadding, again, to create the kind of dome shape on top of the drum. Um, and then bought the lace trim from Hobbycraft, which is a kind of lace ribbon. Um, and again, the 21st century yarns was the chenille trim. Um, and yeah, stuck a few pins in it and gifted it to her and she was over the moon with it. So um, definitely would like to try and make a drum again at some point. Right, nearly there. So next one is Peter Rabbit, which is an A2V brands kit, which I believe was sold in Sainsbury's um, about a year, maybe two years ago now. And I missed out at the time to get the kit, but I, of course, with my bogging hunting skills, found it on Facebook Marketplace um, and bought it then and knew immediately that I wanted to make a little pillow. So here it is. This is little Peter. So it's stitched on a 28 count Joblin fabric. And then I used the Fat Quarter Shop, Fat Quarter Shop tutorial um, of how to attach the fabric around the edge and then I used uh, Vonna Pfeiffer's tutorial to make the cording that goes around the edge just with some of the leftover threads and then again the same fabric is on the back so yeah really really tough with that one again took a while with the sewing machine but we get there in the end um, and then the other one that complements it is Jemima Puddle Duck which again, same um, kit, you know, ATV brands. I got this off of Vinted, actually, this chart, um, well, the kit, and finished her in exactly the same way, but used the pink cording around the edge instead. So, yeah. Same fabric on the back. So then they sit together. And I'm really happy with them. Right, next big finish. 
which I haven't showed yet. It's on my Instagram, um, but only finished this the other day. So we're ready for this. This is Blooming Swan. Just zoom in a bit closer there. So this is from Pigeon Coop Designs. And I bought this off of their website. And this is the one that we were doing the stitch long for, the Blooming Swan Sal stitch long, um, which you can again find on Instagram. And a lot of us have finished it now, but there's still a few that have just started or kind of halfway through. So feel free to join if you'd like. Um, and I finished this in a white Hobbycraft frame. And I used a Hobbycraft um, trim around the edge, pom-pom trim. And again, mounted it onto some mount board, put some wadding underneath it to create that kind of dome shape. I um, don't know if you can really see that from the camera. Um, it's on a 20, 28 count even weave, which I hand dyed myself. Um, and then this fabric again, I got from a local craft fair. Um, and it's a boutique design, but I thought the turquoise in the fabric really complemented the turquoise that was in the pattern and went well with the pinks and yeah, I was really chuffed with that fabric. So that is the finished effect. And yeah, I just keep looking at it. It's just so pretty. And um, so that sits in our living room. Yeah. And then my final finish which I have not yet shown on my Instagram or anything is Highland Cows. I only finished this literally the other night. Um, so I've got lots of back stitching, but it really makes all the difference, I think. And yeah, it's so, so cute. So I've got lots of finishing plans for this, which I won't kind of fully go into. I'll just show you it when I actually do fully finish it. But um, on the whole, I like to try and finish pieces as soon as I stitch them. Um, I know some people just kind of keep them um, set aside and then finish them all at once. But I kind of like to finish as I go on because I like having them displayed um, or being able to gift them or whatever. So, um, yeah, there's only a few projects that I haven't actually fully finished. Um, but yeah, they will be soon. So yeah, I was really chuffed with that one. And yeah, that's all my finishes and FFO. Right, so that was all my fully finished objects and finished objects. I hope you enjoyed that part. Um, I've just realized how dark it actually is in here now. I've just put the light on, it's a horrible day outside today. and um, Very wet and windy. So right, next we'll do the final section, which will be my Nashville Needlework Market Hall, um, which, uh, yeah I'm excited to show you I love seeing everyone else's um so hopefully I can enable you maybe a little bit um and I've only got, well I say a couple of bits I've got quite a few bits um but I've kind of bought stuff as I've seen other people show it so it's a bit of a collection now so the first one I think there's no surprise here that I bought Chubby B from Jeanette Douglas um and I also bought the Chubby Fox which I believe was released um so I'd say 20, last year then um, and there's the chubby bird which I've got already but I mean look at the chubby bee he's like the cutest thing ever there's quite a lot of glare on that um, and then of course keeping with the bee theme uh, botanic bee I'd seen um, Laura from Butterfly Stitches Cotton and Clay UK um, show this and yeah we might possibly do a stitch along for this at some point um oh it's pretty i just love flowers as you can probably tell from my top um and a lot of my stitching uh bees and flowers are key elements in all my projects this one is by primrose cottage and it's valentine's day quaker gorgeous little pillow i don't know why but i just love stitching for valentine's day um I want to have a little Valentine's Day display would be the aim. Um, so this would definitely be in it. And then the other one that was Primrose Cottage, which again was not from market, but ordered at the same time. And that's of course the Honeybee Quaker. You can never have too many bees. 
Um, I'll just take this one out of the packaging. This is by October House Fiber Arts and this is Pollinator's Garden. Gorgeous kind of long pillow. Again, it has bees. I needed it. Um, and then, oh my gosh, I hadn't seen these before. These are the animal crackers, which I've, must have taken the internet by storm. They're just fabulous. Um, this is Maggie May. I mean, who doesn't love a bunny in a cardigan? <laughs> love it. So yeah, I'd hope to stitch that one fairly soon to make it into a three-dimensional rabbit pillow. Um, and then, of course, you can't just buy one. You've got to buy more. So I have also bought Miss Hazel. Get this out of the packaging. Which, again, is a squirrel in a dress. What's not to love about that? So they'll look really cute together. And then, oh my gosh, look at this one. This is Bob and Mouse which is honestly the cutest cross stitch pattern I think I've ever ever seen um and it just sits on a nice little bobbin and it's just so cute can you imagine that just oh, sitting up here like somewhere in the craft room so yeah I'm gonna have to stitch this one soon I probably won't use the week's dye works threads I've got a couple of them but I've got the full DMC collection so I might just Go with DMC or use like DMC variegated or I've got some um hand dyed threads as well that I've bought um as I've kind of gone along when I do a bit of stitchy shopping. So um I might use those as well. So we'll see. But that is on my radar as something to stitch quite soon, the bobbin one, because it's just absolutely adorable. Um so yeah, that's all from me today then. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I kind of do more of a normal floss tube in the next video, which I believe will be kind of start of May time, just when I get a, a minute off work really. Um, I'll, I'll film something and show you what I've been working on. Although the main thing I did uh, in the last few weeks was finish the Highland Cow piece. Um, and I've also gone back to stitching the boobies one, which you would have seen in my whip parade. Um, I'm just trying to get a lot of the whips that I've had for quite a while finished. Um, and then I can start loads of new stuff. Um, which is always lots of fun. Um, so yeah, it's been wonderful to chat to you all again today. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you in my next video. Happy stitching. Bye!